Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Earthly Headlines. I've got a big one today. This this has been reported by multiple media outlets like uh, National Geographic, The Guardian, even Ars Technica. And I, and I read through a bunch of tweets by notable people like Graham Hancock and other people. And I kind of wanted to talk about this because it's something that... I've been reading about lately, first of all, there's a book by Yuval Harari called Sapiens. I highly recommend to you guys. I might even put a link in the description uh, just so you guys can get your hands on it because it's super interesting. It has to do with human history and that Homo sapiens wasn't the only, we weren't the only species of humans. There are a bunch of other ones and probably even more that we don't even know about. But anyway, this story is super interesting and let's just dive right into it because you know there's a lot to cover so one of the headlines is offspring of neanderthal and denisovan dna or denisovan identified for first time okay so just in a quick nutshell break it down there were uh there's a species of human called neanderthals that rose in the west and in the middle east and uh it occupied europe like parts of croatia and uh turkey stuff like that and then denisova Den- denisovans rather mainly came from the east we don't know too much about the denisovan we don't know as much well we don't know much about either of them but we know more about neanderthals than the denisovans because with denisovans we only have uh, a tooth a molar and a couple of bone fragments that we identified as humans uh, and they all come from the same place, this cave. In, it's in this place called the Altai Mountains. The Altai Mountains, they're kind of like a natural border between China, Russia, Mongolia, and uh, Kazakhstan, or Afghanistan, something like that. I don't, I'm, I, don't, I, I don't have a map. It's not really that important. But uh, <clears throat> what is important is this cave is the site of not only Denisovans, but also Neanderthals and a bunch of other animals and stuff. So... The, uh, one the the cave itself is a huge mystery but anyway uh let's focus on what they found which they found the bone of this of this probably a teenage girl whose mother was a neanderthal and her father was a denisovan the father was a denisovan who also was had neanderthal lineage uh even further back and this this whole story is amazing how they figured this all out because again in Denisova cave it's if you could imagine all bone fragments there's no skeleton there's no skull or anything like that N- not yet anyway but the bone that they found from this girl was e- eaten and chewed up by hyenas passed through their digestive tract they pooped it out and then they they found the bone after going through all that stuff. And so, uh, and they were still able to come to these conclusions. It seems like painstaking work, um, but it's a really interesting story. How, how, do, how do they find all this? Well, well, l- let me uh, provide you guys some context. More, some more context, this is a lot to get through. So, um, f- for the longest time, uh, people didn't know whether these scientists didn't know whether these species had interbred. Uh, there were they did in in modern humans we do we do retain like two up to two to three percent of Neanderthal DNA if you're from Europe or Asia. Um, but there are other groups like Melanesians who have up to five percent Denisovan DNA. So people they weren't against this idea of interbreeding, but they thought it was really rare and the chance the chance for the two ancient hominins to come together and breed they thought it was kind of astronomical or very um, case by case. But now they think it happened pretty regularly and there wasn't any, quote, qualms about interbreeding when the chance arose. The, oh, yeah, by the way, the, the, <laughs> the, the girl was born 90,000 years ago. They date 90,000 years. And remember, Neanderthals went extinct about 40,000 years ago. So we're talking really old, old bones here. 
And then Denisovans and Neanderthals separated from each other 390,000 years ago. And since then, they were crossing paths here and there. And I guess the Denisovan cave was w one of these sites where they, they either lived together or they met up and did, the, did their thing and then would leave. But either way, um, they, these, these groups of people, uh, they got together. In research published in the journal Nature, Vivian Slan, she's a, a researcher from Leipzig, and she's the one who did a lot of the legwork in terms of analyzing all the bones and, and uh, structuring the, what do you call, um, uh, sorting out the DNA and comparing it to other strains of DNA and stuff like that. So this girl was at least 13. She died more than 50,000 years ago. Another article said 90,000 years. The reason why this girl is special is because her parents were, one was a Neanderthal, her mom was a Neanderthal and her dad was a, a straight Denisovan with some Neanderthal DNA. And what they wanted to find out first was, well, when they found the child, they wanted to sequence some mitochondrial DNA first just to find out who the woman was, who their mom was. And they found out that she was a Neanderthal that closely resembled a, a Neanderthal bones found in Croatia, which is thousands of miles away from this cave. Her father, again, was a Denisovan, and he had some traces of Neanderthal DNA as well. So up until now, they thought Neanderthals and Denisovans were wiped out through violent conflict with modern humans. About 60,000 years ago is when our, our species started to really gain steam. But now they think, and this is what I thought too, they probably just got absorbed into the population and eventually just their DNA just sort of spread out. Because if you if you were to add up all the DNA, like all the people, if you were to, all the people alive now, if you were to analyze their DNA and took all the parts that are Neanderthal only, and you, let's say, let's just say for, for example's sake that you were able to take them out and put them in a bowl or something, we would retain at least 50% of the original Neanderthal DNA, which is fascinating, right? And then once we find out more about the Denisovans, I'm pretty sure a, f a figure like that will come out as well in certain populations. Uh, like right here, Australasians, not notably those from Papua New Guinea, is about 5% Denisovan, like I said. Um, half of the Neanderthal genome is alive and well in people living today. What did the Denisovans look like? They seem to have been very large and robust, even compared to Neanderthals. They were probably pretty impressive. And they're able to say this just by finding a few fragments and and a finger bone and uh, a molar, a tooth. So I I I wish I could find something w that really goes into detail why they feel that way. Uh, it's, it seems like it would take a lot of work to to come to that conclusion, but I don't know. That's something. That's some sort of lead, right? The researcher she says, uh, Slan says that. Uh, the, the remains of, from a first generation admixed individual, which basically means someone who's a first generation Neanderthal and Denisovan, is a small probability that they found it, unless <laughs> perhaps interbreeding between Neanderthals and Denisovans was not uncommon. So this is why they think it was way more common than, than before, is because you, logically you would think if you went by the old paradigm, or the old, not old paradigm, but the old... Uh, with their their initial impressions of oh yeah the neanderthals and denisovans are separate and they've stayed separate so i don't maybe they could interbreed but it doesn't make doesn't make sense that rather not make sense but it seems like a small chance where we'll actually find a first generation offspring which again they found which is why the story is so interesting so what they're doing next is they're going to start combing the, ca the sediment of the cave even further for more DNA. There are prob there's probably more pieces of the bone. There's probably another first generation person that they haven't found. And one thing of note that I, I, should, I feel I should mention is, is there's a lot of bone fragments that they haven't analyzed to this degree. There's thousands of bone fragments. Once they get through all that, all that backlog of bones, I'm pretty sure there's going to be even more to this story, so really stay, stay tuned to this story. This article says 90,000 years ago that she was born, and there's, there's like a facial reconstruction of her. Oh, it looks, she looks like my bus driver when I was in first grade. So, I mean, she's not that far away. Maybe she's bigger. Another thing is the question of contamination or maybe a glitch in the computer software. 
Uh, they were really they they went through these this analysis a bunch of times, like many 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 times over, just to make sure that they that this is legit. And it, all signs point that it's this is a real deal. That this is a teenager that had a Neanderthal mom and a Denisovan dad, right? So. After this on the six samples, the results always came out the same. The bone had nearly equal amounts of DNA from a Neanderthal and a Denisovan. Okay, that so she had about like what they found was about 38% Denisovan or, or Neanderthal and like 40 something percent Denisovan or yeah, Denisovan. 38% Neanderthal and 40 something percent Denisovan. And the next logical question is okay, is she, does she come from a population of already mixed group of Neanderthals and Denisovans or is she actually a first generation and they found out that she was actually a first generation because uh, they looked at the mother's mitochondrial DNA and they looked at the 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 father's nuclear DNA they were able to okay so there's this thing called heterozygosity and it, and that basically means if you have a low variation of certain genes you have if you, it measures kind of like the variety of genes that you have. So for example, if you come from a gene pool that has interbred, maybe your cousins got married for a few hundred years or something like that, then your heterozygosity would be really, really low. But if you were, if your gene pool was more diverse, your heterozygosity would be re really high. This girl's uh, heterozygosity level was super high. It was like, it was through the roof. So that's one that was one in actually almost like a smoking gun indicator for these uh geneticists like this geneticist from harvard who who wasn't even part of the work who who was on the sidelines and just following it closely he even said wow that's that's a significant and compelling piece of data it's very interesting and it's almost like a miracle that they found this first generation hybrid it's crazy so again the denisovans are shrouded in mystery the only stuff we know about them is just from whatever we extracted from this uh, tooth and these bone fragments. And uh, God knows what else is in there. I'm sure there's so much more that we've yet to learn. Like some questions that we need to answer are, when exactly did they live? Where, what were their migration patterns? What, what, were, what did they know? Did they have any uh, sort of um, culture that we don't know about? Did they have a language? Uh, what were their preferred uh food like food source all this stuff we've yet to uncover and i think eventually we we will once you we get through all of these uh these pieces of evidence that we that we have just sitting around so yeah her the paternal lineage clearly matches genetic signature of denisovans this whole thing influences my snapshot of what was going on 30 like 40,000 plus years ago cuz i mean we could have had I mean, we have races now. We have white people, black people, Latinos, Asians. But back then, it could have even been real, like in, in uh, let's say, like a fantasy novel. Maybe we had elf-like people. We know we had dwarf-like people, the Homo flor flores sciensis and flores island. Like they're, they're really like two feet tall or something like that. So maybe we did have dwarves. Maybe Tolkien was onto something. Maybe there were giants. Uh, who knows? But we do know that the Denisovans and, and Neanderthals were way bigger than us, and they were more sinewy and m built physically imposing, whereas we were more crafty and, and we had more of an abstract and spatial, uh, uh, what you would call, um, think the way we thought. So we were able to plan ahead and use the terrain to our advantage and stuff like that, and that's probably why we we're the last one standing and we're adaptable and all that. But back then, maybe there was like a huge, yeah, maybe it was, just, yeah, it was probably normal. We were probably all walking around. Who knows, we were probably all walk, walking around together and then some crafty homo sapiens kind of, maybe he was, a, maybe he spread po pro human, homo sapiens pro -pop propaganda and exterminated everybody. Who knows, who knows? But at one point people were, wa the, when I say people, I mean the species homo, and everything under that umbrella homo were probably knew about each other dealt with each other in some capacity this is really blowing my mind and kind of tickling that part of my brain that created that uh creative part that's trying to imagine what was it, what it was like back then uh, just a few more uh details i want to go over 
Uh, <clears throat> yeah, uh, just to go back, because the excavation team seems like they were really competent. I mean, they're dealing with just fragments and f upon fragments of bones. How do you even know if it's a human bone? Because mixed in with all these bones were bones of hyenas, uh, like wild dogs or wolves, a, b a bunch of like rabbits. So how do they determine which one was human? Well, they looked at the collagen that comprised much of the bone. There was still collagen on the bone even after it was digested by these hyenas, which is mind-blowing to me. So from there, they were able to identify them as humans, which the scientific name of the, of the teenage girl was Denisova 11. So they think the fragment came from a long bone, like, like a femur or something, or a forearm or something like that. And that's it. That's all they knew. Uh, and they carbon dated it to almost 100,000 years ago. They knew she was a girl because X chromosome sequences showed up as often as the ones from any other chromosome. So there's no Y chromosome that they found in that fragment. Uh, so that's kind of a safe, that, that makes sense to me. Oh, here's the percentages. So 39% of the DNA fragments were clearly Neanderthal, and then the 42% were Denisovan. So she was nearly an even mix of the two groups. So that, is, again, that is another indicator that she is definitely the first generation. So more, the father is really interesting to me. Well, they're both are interesting. The, okay, so like I said earlier, the, the mother was closely related to a Neanderthal skeleton in, in Croatia. So how did she get way out over there? There must have been some sort of road, some sort of cultural, uh, something was going on back then that we, that we're probably so off base right now that we can't even imagine, but she's related to somebody in Croatia, at least closely, it seems to be closely related. And the father comes from a population that had already interbred with Neanderthals in the, in the distant past from their point. So this is 90,000 90, years ago, Neanderthals and Denisovans branched off 390, a uh, thousand years ago so that's a lot of time between for stuff to happen between the two populations first of all i want to know why did they split off in the first place was there a catastrophe was there some sort of physical uh reason like maybe a, a giant earthquake separated two populations and then that's how they split or was there a genetic mutation or like uh, uh, suddenly like did the sun's rays change or was there uh, did was there some sort of radiation I don't know. I don't know if we'll ever know that. We might. But um, the best we can do is <clears throat> really try to understand the possibilities. And it, I think the possibilities here is if people are interbreeding regularly and it seems like there's no resistance to it, and it doesn't seem like there was any genocides or anything. There probably were back then. But I don't know. That might be a homo sapiens thing just to kill people. Who knows? In any case, it seems like there had to be some sort of cultural undertone going on here. And I'm, I'm glued. I'm subscribed to this. I'm, as soon as something comes out, I am going to be on it. And I want to I wanna see um, where this goes. Why did the Denisovans inhabit East Asia? Were they only in East Asia? Uh, were what about the Neanderthals? Well, what was the extent of their range of their uh, of their I guess population range? Did they go anywhere else? What about North America? Were there were there a, a different species of humans in North America at the time? So uh, there's so many questions. And then modern humans. <clears throat> here's the other thing: clear signs of interbreeding and apparent past willingness to live together may indicate that modern humans absorbed earlier populations rather than completely displacing them. So if, if modern humans had displaced these populations, then that could mean they killed them off or they, they just, the humans just occupied all the, the modern humans occupied all the land and they just didn't accept these. They probably treated them like animals and left them to die and fend for themselves. Or they just let them live among them. Hey, if you guys, you, we're going to live like this. You guys are welcome to join us. If not, then all right, I guess you're an outcast and you're po you'll probably die. They probably had some sort of cultural revolution going on. Who knows? But again, there have been over 2,000 undiagnosed bone fragments. There's a lot more potential sources of DNA we still haven't looked at. And there's probably dark DNA that we don't even know what to attribute to. That might be another uh, human species, that, a third party that we don't know about. 
or a fourth party. So what do you guys think? It, it, was I clear on this? I don't know. I, I, I feel like I was kind of everywhere. But there's just so much stuff to take in. So just as a rundown, just a quick recap. They find teenage DNA or a te- uh, a, uh, the remains of a, of a teenager that's, that happened to have a mother that was a Neanderthal and a father that was a Denisovan with some Neanderthal origins as well in this localized cave that happens to be the site of where all Denisovan DNA that, we've, that we have found comes from this cave. And this cave also seems to be a site of crossbreeding of two different, spe- or two different types of humans. And it seems like they lived together in harmony. Well, maybe not harmony, but they, they, they were interbreeding. So yeah, that's pretty much it. That's the story in a nutshell. And then there's more to come. There's more stuff to, to analyze. Thanks, guys. Please leave a comment. Um, I, 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 re- I really enjoy doing these videos. And I hope you guys have a good day. I'll see you tomorrow.